Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are ravenous wolves. Welcome, my dear listener. Today we present to you the false prophets. Join us until the end of this video. Let's discover together the whole truth about false prophets. Before delving into this topic, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we publish a new video. Let's get started. If we come across a sign that says, be careful, there is a dog, we immediately put ourselves on guard. But how would you react if when you arrived at a certain place someone warned you, be careful, there's a pit bull on the loose? Let's assume for a moment that you have no idea what these animals look like. How could you take proper care of yourself? In order to follow this warning, you would need a detailed description of the dog in question, because otherwise you will probably end up being afraid of all the dogs you see on the street. For the same is true of the warning of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Listening friend, in order to take this warning seriously, we need to know how to distinguish true teachers from false ones, lest we end up rejecting them all without distinction, or listening to those who we should not listen to. The Lord does not say here, beware of all preachers and all pastors, but rather, beware of false prophets. The first thing we must do then, is define what this term indicates. And for this, we must begin by defining what a prophet is. In general terms, a prophet is a person who speaks the truth of God to others. The Greek word prophets can mean one who speaks or defends. Prophets are also called seers because of their spiritual intuition or ability to see the future. In the Bible, prophets often served both the role of teaching and bringing revelation, declaring God's truth on contemporary issues, while also revealing details about the future. Isaiah's ministry, for example, touched both the present and the future. He preached boldly against corruption in his day and delivered great visions of Israel's future. Prophets were tasked with faithfully speaking the word of God to the people. They were instrumental in leading the nation of Israel and establishing the church. The house of God is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone as alluded to in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Many prophets are mentioned in the Bible, which also includes women. Furthermore, many others prophesied, as was the case of the 70 elders of Israel. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him. And he took the spirit that was in him and put it on the 70 old men. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied and did not cease. The first prophet mentioned in the Bible is Abraham. In Genesis chapter 20 verse 7, God spoke to Abimelech in a dream, saying, Now therefore return the wife to her husband, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. And if you do not return it, he knows that you and all your people will surely die. God had revealed himself to Abraham on numerous occasions, both Jacob and Joseph, descendants of Abraham, had dreams about the future that could be classified as prophetic. Moses was called a man of God and was considered a great prophet. Joshua and many of the judges served as prophets, with Samuel as the last judge hearing the voice of God as a child. The time of Elijah and Elisha was characterized by a high level of prophetic activity. In reality, a school of prophets flourished during their lifetimes. Additionally, Elijah and Elisha performed many miracles. In the New Testament, John the Baptist predicted about the Messiah. Jesus himself came as a prophet, priest, king, and Messiah, fulfilling many of the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. The early church also had prophets. For example, Ananias was given a prophecy about the future of the Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 21 verse 9 mentions four daughters of Philip who could prophesy. Prophecy is listed as a spiritual gift. At the end of time, two witnesses will prophesy from Jerusalem. 
Generally, the prophets that God sends are despised and their message is ignored. Isaiah describes his nation by saying, For this people is rebellious, lying children, children who would not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us what is right, tell us flattering things, prophesy lies. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 13 verse 34, Jesus lamented that Jerusalem had killed the prophets sent by God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stone those who are sent to you. Now not everyone who proclaims a message is actually a prophet of God. False prophets are prophets of a false god, an idol, or those who claim to speak for the true God, but do so falsely. King Ahab kept 400 of these false prophets hired to tell him what he wanted to hear. In the New Testament, we have many warnings against false prophets. Jesus taught, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Then he added that, In the end times, false Christs and false prophets will arise and will perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Revelation tells of a false prophet who will arise in the tribulation and deceive people throughout the world. Listening friend, the Bible warns us against false prophets who claim to speak in the name of God. To avoid being deceived, we must always test the spirits whether they are from God. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. John warned against believing every spirit. We must never assume that every spiritual experience and every demonstration of spiritual power is from God. We must test spiritual experiences and phenomena to see if they are truly from God. Many, when they first encounter the reality of the spiritual world, are too shocked and surprised to wonder if they are from God. This leads to easy deception. Even though the early church had a strong life and a great measure of purity, John knew that false prophets and their message were real in the early church. The text tells us, test the spirits if they are from God. We cannot waste time paying attention to all those who claim to have supernatural powers. Well, we have been told to try, to verify the truthfulness of such people. There is a lot of simulation and imitation of Christianity that has nothing supernatural about it. Therefore, this is a responsibility of every Christian, but mainly of the congregational leadership. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29, and let others judge. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, examine everything, hold fast that which is good. Testing the spirits is the job of the body of Christ. This work must be done using the gifts of discernment that God has given to Christians in general, especially congregation leaders. All prophecy must be judged according to Scripture since there are many false prophets today. False prophets are false teachers. Paul used the word this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, where he wrote, but he who prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, and consolation. Prophesying here means teaching, exhorting, instructing. Today there are teachers against whom we need to remain alert. Prophecy has become an interesting topic, and so it should be. A specialist in this topic said that we should be careful with those who abuse prophecies for their own benefit. There are many people who claim to speak on behalf of God, but they do so falsely. There are even false prophets who enter the church, bring destructive heresies, and lead people away from the truth with their tempting doctrine. Peter warned in his second letter, chapter 2, verse 1, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will covertly introduce destructive heresies, and even deny the Lord who rescued them bringing upon themselves sudden destruction. Dear listener, false prophets do not teach the truth of the Bible. Sometimes they teach that which is blatantly contrary to the Word of God. Other times they distort the truth or add their own opinion, doctrine, and lifestyle. 
While some false prophets deceive themselves and do not realize that they are spreading lies, many others are driven by greed and pride. His goal is not to make disciples of Jesus, but disciples of his own teaching. False prophets bring destruction upon the church. Their twisted doctrine attracts fickle people, people who do not have a solid foundation, people who are just beginning to seek God or who do not have a solid relationship with Him. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, we read, Their eyes are full of adultery. They are not satisfied with sin. They seduce fickle souls. Their hearts are accustomed to covetousness, and they are children of a curse. They have left the straight path and have gone astray, following the path of Balaam the son of Beor, who loved the reward of wickedness. These ungodly false prophets are a dangerous and corrupting presence in the body of Christ, not only deceiving others but themselves as well. The text cited tells us, they have eyes full of adultery. His heart is on the flesh and his eyes are on adultery, both spiritual and sexual. They take advantage of the unstable to join their paths. They seduce fickle souls. Literally, Peter wrote that his eyes are full of an adulterous woman. They lust after every girl they see. They look at every woman as a potential adulteress. The text continues adding, They have hearts accustomed to covetousness, and they are children of a curse. These false prophets are equipped, but not for ministry, but for selfish gain. They are truly children of the curse. We all train our hearts for something, whether we train it in greed and lust or in piety. These false ones are like Balaam, who was guilty of the greatest sin, leading others into sin and for his own gain. Balaam had to be rebuked by a dumb beast of burden because he did not hear God. Now, even Christians who are strong in their faith can be deceived for a short time before they realize the true intentions of the false teacher. They preach freedom, but their doctrine only leads to chains. Peter says that many will follow their debaucheries because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. Ultimately, the work of false prophets blasphemes the name of God and mars the reputation of his people. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 and 23, Jesus warned about false prophets, saying, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? Thus every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, so by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The warnings of false prophets are necessarily based on the conviction that not all prophets are true, that the truth can be violated, and that the enemies of the gospel usually conceal their hostility and pose as brothers in faith. It is in the nature of these false prophets to deceive and deny their own character. Many times they even deceive themselves, believing themselves to be sheep when in reality they are ravenous wolves. The wolf does not exist for anything other than that. You cannot use it as a pet in the house. You cannot eat its meat. That beast is there and we must take care of it. So we must also beware of these men who exist for nothing other than to mislead the souls of those who are awakened by the preaching of the gospel, who stand by the narrow door to do all they can to prevent sinners from entering through it. We must also consider that these false ones look harmless, meek, gentle, but the Lord warns us here that if we fall into their clutches, they will devour us. In Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, the Apostle Paul not only warns, but also begs the brothers to keep their eyes open due to the enormous danger that these men represent. But I urge you, brothers, to pay attention to those who cause divisions and offenses against the doctrine that you have learned and to separate yourself from them. For such people do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, 
but their own bellies and with smooth words and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. The words of these men are soft, easy to swallow. Paul uses a compound Greek word there, krestologia, from kresto meaning useful, good, beneficial, and logia meaning speech. They don't come to us saying, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. They come covertly, talking about things that seem useful to us. And with those soft words, Paul says, they deceive the hearts of the naive. The basic fault of a false prophet is self-interest. It may be expressed by a desire to obtain an easy life, a desire for prestige, or the desire to apply one's own ideas and not God's ideas. The text cited tells us, by their fruits you will know them. We guard against false prophets by looking to their fruits. This means observing different aspects in their lives and their ministries. Number one, we must pay attention to the way of life that a teacher demonstrates. Do you demonstrate justice, humility, and faithfulness in the way you live? Number two, we must pay attention to the content of his teachings. Is it the true fruit of the Word of God, or is it centered on man and can be heard well in the ears? Number three, we must pay attention to the effect of his teachings. Are people growing in Jesus, or are they just being entertained and eventually drifting away? Anyone who teaches a different way to get to heaven other than through that narrow door of repentance and faith is a false prophet, even if he quotes half the Bible in every sermon. The salvation that Christ offers to the sinner through faith is not simply a free ticket to heaven, but rather reconciliation with God and liberation from the dominion of sin over our lives. It includes the dethroning of sin and the enthronement of grace, as Paul says in Romans chapter 6 verse 14, For sin will not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Dear listener, if you are under grace, sin cannot continue to reign. We fight daily against him. He is still our enemy, but he is no longer our king. And in that same chapter of Romans in verse 22, Paul goes on to say, But now that you have been freed from sin and have become servants of God, you have sanctification as your fruit, and as its end, eternal life. Who are those whose goal is eternal life? those who now have sanctification as fruit because they have been freed from sin. The false prophet excludes this essential aspect of the gospel from his message. They entertain men with various topics, some very useful to be sure, but they do not talk to them about repentance. They do not confront them with their sins. They do not talk to them about that faith in Christ that leads us to embrace him as he is offered in the gospel, not only as our priest but also as our prophet and as our king. In other words, these fakes introduce their poison through what they say, but also through what they remain silent. They do not cast aside the Bible completely, but they add to it and subtract from it. They maintain certain essential things from the Bible. They talk about Christ, His death on the cross, trusting Him. But in His preaching all this amounts to a set of meaningless phrases. Dear ones, fortunately, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church and false prophets are no different. In the same chapter on false prophets, Peter reminds the church that the Lord knows how to deliver the godly from temptation and to reserve the unrighteous to be punished on the day of judgment. God condemns false prophets with some of the most intense descriptions of judgment in the Bible. God promises that their destruction will be swift and for whom the deepest darkness is reserved forever, as alluded to in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Listening friend, if you do not want to belong to that group, make sure you have entered through the narrow door and that you are currently traveling the narrow path. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. And on the other hand, if there is a false prophet in your church, among your Christian friends or in the media who is leading Christians away from the truth, keep in mind that for Christians it is just a test that will pass. 
His evil will soon be exposed, or those who are faithfully following Christ will eventually see his fangs through his sheepish exterior. We can pray that false prophets will repent of their errors and that others will not be taken captive. We must also be diligent in studying the truth ourselves. The best way to recognize a falsehood is to be well versed in the truth. Combat the danger of false prophets by looking to God as the source of truth. Compare everything you hear with what he actually says in his word, the Bible, and share the truth of the gospel with others. The word of God is powerful and necessary for us to live an effective life. We can all follow Paul's advice to Timothy. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Dear listener, you realize that during this journey we are going to go through many difficult circumstances, but despite everything I encourage you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us always remain on the path of truth, firm against the wiles of the devil. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you for being part of our channel. We appreciate you very much, my dear listener. And without further ado, now I say goodbye and I will be with you in a future video.